Hey guys, welcome to my 13 card Hollows and Expansion. Uh, basically, I love the holiday theme for any holiday that Blizzard puts out there. Um, they have great events and everything, but Hearthstone just hasn't really seen that love. Um, and I also think that Hearthstone needs more expansions, more standalone content that can help contribute to the meta in its current state, either by uh, helping out weaker areas or uh, complementing you know, the current patterns. So I think that um, with this, you'll see the direction I'm going, and overall, I think, you know, these are some fun cards that can be played with in, in a standalone way if you want to, you know, go all out and make a Halloween-themed deck, or if you just want to integrate it a, a little bit here and there throughout your other decks. Okay, so first up in the one-mana slot, we have Miss Bigglesworth. Death Rattle, summon Mr. Bigglesworth. Um, and both of them are 1-1s one and beasts. And they also have the Hollow's End tag. And real quick, the Hollow's End tag is something that every card in this expansion has. I think it's something good and can tie the cards within the holidays together, and as well as give synergistic effects with cards within in that inside that holiday. And we'll get more we'll touch more on that later. Um, but for now, I mean let's just look at kind of the idea behind this card, and I'll talk about some balancing along the way with different cards that I, I made here, but I think it really makes sense with this card. It's a it's a somewhat aggro card, and yet also somewhat non-aggro card. <clears throat> it's a beast tag, so you can buff it if you want to play those kind of decks with either Druid or Hunter. And it's also a, a death rattle effect, and it, it's, a, it's a sticky minion, so it really just fits into a lot of decks. When I think of this card, I think of something like a Possessed Villager mixed with an Enchanted Raven. And... You know, together, this kind of is what pushes it into the legendary category for me. Okay, next up, we have something uh, fairly simple as well, a Sinister Squashling. It is a 1 mana 1-1, one, one, and it has Battle Cry and Death Rattle, deal 1 damage to a random enemy minion. Um, I think of this, uh, I think of uh, something between a Flame Juggler and a Huge Toad. Um, basically, it has the power to deal that one damage at beginning and end, but the fact is it has uh, weaker stats, and um, it also is kind of an anti-aggro tactic, I would really say. I mean, you can kind of play it in aggro, but it's not going to have any chance of dealing that damage to your face. So um, I think that here, you know, anti-aggro decks could play a card like this as some early game uh, tempo, and definitely bring it back with um, various effects later on, such as you know, Nazoth or something. In the uh, two mana slot, we have Surprise Pumpkin. Uh, Death Rattle, summon one to two, so there's some RNG. Uh, random, one drop, hollows, and minions. And this includes token minions. So that means you could summon Mrs. Bigglesworth or Mr. Bigglesworth as one of the minions, for example. Um, you could also summon uh, a Sinister squash, uh, Squashling. And uh, it's an O2, so here we're thinking of a similar stat line to something like Nerubian Egg, uh, where, again, it's not the absolute best for aggro decks or anything. It, it's, it's okay as long as they can buff it up, but it's definitely going to be played in maybe a zoo deck, or uh, it's going to be played, you know, it could be played in controlled decks as well that want to, you know, give their minions taunt or something like that. The next up in the three mana slot, we have Magic School Dropout. Um, he is a 2-1. And he has Death Rattle, deal 2 damage to all minions, and summon a Malefic Entity. And a Malefic Entity is a 1 mana 2 1 token, basically. Um, and, you know, the thing I'm thinking of here is uh, we have an, something like an Explosive Sheep in combination with a uh, Harvest Golem. And, uh, when, you know, when you bring these two together, so the stat line is a little less, uh, it's easy to deal with by uh, an aggressive style deck, and um, it's also, you know, expendable by a control deck, and it also leaves a minion behind, and that's the important factor here. Sometimes you have early game clear by a control deck, and it doesn't really do anything for you still. You're still going to lose the game because the board is clear, but now that it's the enemy's turn, and they just play all their minions down again. But with something like Magic School Dropout, it's a little bit stronger of a clear because it does leave a 2-1 behind. Uh, the aggressive deck could still easily deal with it with a ping or some low-cost spell or something like that. But at the same time, at least, you know, you had something on the field that they would have to deal with before progressing or else maybe that you'd get a slightly favorable trade in again the following turn. So it's just something to help out the uh, control decks, which are definitely struggling in the current meta of Hearth. All right, next up we've got <laughs> Big Game Hunter's cousin, Big Zombie Hunter. Um, and obviously, you know, we'll see the similarities right here. Um, basically, you know, Big Zombie Hunter wants to destroy a Hollows and Minion. So that's the similarity there. When Big Game Hunter was 3 mana, you could say that was a little too strong, being able to just counter all uh, monsters that have 7 or more attack. But Big Zombie Hunter, he's going to be really strong for a little bit while the expansion is first out, and maybe everyone is running these uh, cards in their decks. 
But as the year, you know, progresses and people are playing less and less of this expansion and maybe only playing one or two of the cards, uh, you know, this guy's not really going to see play, which I think is totally acceptable for a very strong removal card such as this one. And uh, so I think it's just good to put this in there for the expansion. And that way it's also in the set of Hollow's End cards for future Hollow's End expansions. And overall, you know, it, it's good to have removal that is dedicated to uh, what the current meta that, that a given expansion is enforcing. All right, so next is Voodoo Alchemist. Taunt, battle cry, destroy a random friendly minion, and he's a 2-6 um, for 3 mana. And, you know, when you think of this, you can think back to a card like Deathlord, a negative effect for a more powerful uh, tank minion, you know, to defend against aggressive decks. Um, and something that's not quite as effective against uh, non-aggressive decks. This guy is interesting because, you know, with all the death rattle effects floating around some, you know, these days, you could actually get a beneficial effect from his destroy a random friendly minion. But at the same time, if you're trying your hardest to establish board control and against an aggressive deck, uh, maybe you're willing to just sacrifice a random anything in order to get a 2-6 taunt out there to, you know, save yourself. Um, and, and I think that's kind of where this guy's power comes in. And of course, if you were to play him on a blank field, then, you know, you don't have to suffer the negative side effects. So overall, you know, pretty interesting card. All right, the next two cards are filling a spot left behind by our friend Old Murkai, the four mana Murloc slot. Uh, we have uh, Screaming Timidfin up first. He's a 2-3 with a battle cry effect of Silence a Minion. Um, he's part of the Hollers and... Uh, tribe and he's also part of the murloc tribe of course and we also have tormented biofin a 2-4 minion and its battle cry is deal 2 damage to um, uh, any target so i think what's important here is that the four mana slot has really fallen off for murlocs with the loss of old murkai and murlocs are definitely an archetype that struggles on their own and they're typically just thrown into various decks you know with one off or two offs you know just a few few different types of murlocs but with the most recent expansion of Karazhan, there's actually some cards that really focus on Murlocs in, in various ways. And to have a full Murloc deck, I think you really need more support throughout all the mana levels. And I think these two guys provide some of that support that Murlocs would really need as a, if they were to be played as a standalone deck. Um, not to mention, you know, these kind of cards, because they have the Hollow's End tag, could actually just be thrown into some kind of Murloc Hollow's End deck as well. Uh, so, you know, having that dual synergy like that is definitely an interesting thing when it comes to standalone expansions. Okay, so continuing on to the 5 mana slot, we've got two cards also complementary of each other. First is Spectral Skeleton. He is a 6-3, and he has the Death Rattle effect of add a Spectral Steed from your deck to your hand. And then we have Spectral Steed, who is also a 6-3, with the Death Rattle effect, add a Spectral Skeleton to your hand. I think the stat line is kind of similar to that of a, of a Fugin and a Stalag, um, but the difference here is that uh, Fugin and Stalag are legendary, so their stats are a little better, and you can only run one of each in your deck. Uh, the Death Rattle effects between these two are actually also a little different. Fugin and Stalag summon directly to the field, whereas these guys are help pop helping populate your hand. I think this kind of effect is something I don't really see in Hearthstone, and I see it in a lot of other card games, whether it be Yu-Gi-Oh! or Magic. It's basically like an engine effect. There's not many cards in Hearthstone that really act as a, as a self-driven engine. Um, I'd say some of the best examples are perhaps Curator. But basically, you know, what these guys do is, is they're definitively pulling a specific card into your deck, and then the card that is pulled then also pulls a definitive card. An engine doesn't always have to cycle like this, where these two guys only pull each other. You could have a chain of effects, for example, but this is just what I chose to implement for this expansion. And I think an effect like this, for consistency's sake, is really important in a card game. And not to mention, a 6-3 isn't really too overwhelming, because 3 health is fairly easy to deal with. Alright, this next effect is probably just because I love Wisps a lot, but anyway, we have Spirit Caller in the 6 mana slot. Spirit Caller is a 4-4 card, and it gives your Wisps plus 2, plus 2. Um, it has a Death Rattle effect as well, summon 3, 1-1 one, one Wisps. Now, the dual effect of this card that I like it, it, it is, is great, because it kind of is what I just talked about with the 5-mana uh, card, uh, where it has a somewhat of an engine, and this card is a self-driven engine, I would say. It has a first primary effect, similar to Stormwind Champion here, um, which is, you know, giving minions plus one, plus one, except here we have plus two, plus two. Um, but the difference is that, you know, Spirit Caller puts minions down, so whether you're running Wisps or not, 
you're going to get wisps generated on your field thanks to spirit caller but so whether you're running them or not you'll get that and then if you play your second spirit caller or you're a priest and you resurrect a spirit caller or something like that then you're going to be able to buff those wisps up immediately and you'll also summon more wisps when the next spirit caller dies so i think it's really great to have a card like this um and and the, and the stats are slightly lower to justify the the self cycling and self uh you know buffing uh, effect that this card has and I, I would love to see you know like a priest deck based around spirit caller where you know you can play spirit caller and then you resurrect it resurrected and resurrected or something like that you know something crazy i mean granted your resurrecting chances are getting slimmer with all those wisps dying but you might be able to pull off the effect once or twice anyway um and you'll definitely be able to pull off the effect if you have cards like nazoth so if you played uh, a spirit caller resurrected then go nazoth i i just think that um the possibilities of these kind of you know self-contained um buffing effects like this all all wrapped into one card is really great Next up in the 7 mana slot, I've got Candlelight Aqualite. She's a 4-6, battle cry effect of reduce the cost of your Hollows End cards in your hand by 1. Now, uh, I was really debating about putting her down to 6 or 5 mana or changing her stats, but in the end, this is what I went with. And um, the reason being is this. When you think of Emperor Tharasan, he affects all cards no matter what. So I think that this card is definitely closer to something like an Ethereal Peddler. Uh, whereas your Ethereal Peddler is cheaper though, because Ethereal Peddler, you have to first gain the cards of your opponent's class type or, or other class types before you can really play Ethereal Peddler to get effect. Candlelight Aqualite, on the other hand, you're going to actually uh, play this no matter what, because you're going to have Hollow's End cards in your hand if your deck is based around Hollow's End. And that means that she's going to see the most play when Hollow's End first comes out, or when you know the next year's Hollow's End first comes out. But the self-balancing uh, aspect of this card is that as the year goes on and less and less Hollow's End cards are being played, and maybe only the very best, or one or two, or whatever, then Candlelight Aqualite isn't really going to see as much play. Because I think reducing the cost by one is very uninteractive, but yet at the same time, it's definitely fun just so you can play your cards uh, and play more of them. So having her viable in the beginning when the expansion first comes out, I think is great. And then we want to tone her down as the, as the expansion becomes a little older and not have her just be a powerhouse no matter what. <laughs> All right, last but not least, we've got the Headless Horseman at six mana. He's a 6-6, six, six, and uh, Battle Cry and Death Rattle effects. The Battle Cry is uh, add three copies of Sinister Squashling that we mentioned earlier to your hand, and Death Rattle, summon three copies of Sinister Squashling. I kind of draw this card to be similar to something like a Wobbling Runts, because a Wobbling Runts summons three 2-2 two, two Runts. But the stats, of course, are better for Headless Horseman because he's a legendary, and the effect is also slightly different. He summons 1-1s, one etc. But I, I view this guy to be something like a all-in-one death rattle effect. You could put this guy into a deck with Nazoth or Resurrect abilities, <clears throat> and he could be almost self-sustaining. I mean, it's really crazy. He also complements other cards, with, uh, such as uh, Voodoo Alchemist, etc., and really, you know, he's a he's a standalone death rattle creation machine because of the fact that he gives you all these sinister squashlings. Um, and you know, overall, I think the value you can get from him is great. He's not too much of an aggro card because the stats are pretty, you know, average for a six mana uh, legendary. Uh, and also, what he summons isn't that great for aggro either. But for control, on the other hand, it's definitely pretty good. And the fact that he's giving you one mana cards just to kind of weave in there with your excess mana is also really great for a control deck. Because you're, you know, sometimes you always have that one mana residual after a play, but you can just throw down another Sinister Squashling for the next few turns. So overall, I think he's a really awesome, uh, self balancing, self driven engine of a card when it comes to Death Rattle and control style decks, especially if you're going to play Nazoth. So overall, yeah, that was my expansion. I'd love to see standalone expansions like this for Hearthstone. Uh, I can't tell you how much I love the holiday-themed stuff. Um, I can't tell you how much you know I love uh, card games that have regular expansions in terms of you know every other month intervals. Hearthstone, you know, I hope that they're working toward that. Uh, we've seen great expansions out of them, but you know, I think we all feel it that sometimes the meta can just get a little dull, a little slow, too fast. And if you just released small expansions, you know, 10 to 15 cards, something like that, to spice things up regularly, 
could release them as a standalone, just buy the whole expansion kind of set. You could release it as a, you know, small packs or something. Um, you know, however you, however you know, Blizzard might see fit to implement them. But just some something small that players can just obtain and right away put into their decks. Maybe you know, maybe a couple easy quests or something. I don't know. But I, I think that Hearthstone definitely needs to consider small, dedicated, uh, <clears throat> self-contained expansions that would both want to be incorporated into currently existing decks, help uh, support currently existing decks that may be struggling, and also uh, can just simply be played with that same expansion cards, just be played by itself with a few complementary cards. Uh, those are the kind of aspects you really want to go for in a, in a small expansion like this. It doesn't have to be something long-standing that's going to stand the test of time. It could easily become outdated by the next expansion, but as long as you have a little something to help the game really be interesting and, and ever-changing, I think that's what's really going to be awesome about these. But anyway, I hope you guys liked it, and thanks for watching. Just a face.